Okay, I want to talk about baptism. What 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 is being baptized in Yeshua's name, or the Father's name, or any any of that? Same difference, pretty much. Uh, I'm going to start out with Matthew 28, uh, starting in verse 16. But the eleven disciples proceeded to Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had de designated. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some were doubtful. Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. One of the things that you need, I think a big part of the context here, it says, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. That's a big part of it. Because otherwise we kind of become lukewarm. Yes, accept Yeshua, accept Jesus. That's awesome, that's important. But then let's push on to spiritual maturity. Like it says in the beginning of uh, in uh, Hebrews 6, where it says that... Uh, Let's push on to spiritual maturity. In fact, I'll turn there. Uh, where it says, Therefore, leaving the elementary teaching about Christ, let us press on to maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and, and, and of faith toward God, of instruction about washing and laying on of hands and resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. Uh, and this we will do, if God permits. For in the case of those who have once been enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gifts and have been made partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good, good word of God and powers of the age to come and they have fallen away, it is impossible to renew them again to repentance, since they again crucify to themselves the Son of God and and put him to open shame. Uh, and so you have those things. You you, ha you have that, that that push on the spiritual maturity. It, it's wonderful to hear, come to Christ, come to Christ. But there's a point where that's got to go into, okay, now let's move on. Let's let's work on abiding in him. And I believe that's part of what bapti being baptized in his name is. Uh, and you read in Acts, in a couple of, several places, where it says, uh, like Acts 10, 40, uh, verse 48, And he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked him to stay for a few days. There it only shows the name of Jesus Christ. And it is that way through Acts. It's in Acts 2.38, uh, 8.16 and 19.5 Acts 19.5 says and when they heard this they were they were baptized in the name of Lord Jesus Lord Jesus uh and and we become more to believe in Yeshua or Jesus as we go. As we read in Hebrews five nine uh, that I think is important. And having been made perfect, he became to all those who obey him the source 
of eternal salvation. So Yeshua is the source of eternal salvation. But we're supposed to push on the spiritual maturity. Uh, you know, many people say, oh, well, the law was done away with. Really? Then why is it in uh, Luke 6, Luke 6, verse 46, it says, Why do you call me, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? Everyone who comes to me and hears my words and acts upon them, I will show you who, whom he is like. He is like a man building a house who, who dug deep and laid a foundation on the rock. And when the flood occurred and the torrent burst against the, that house and the... Uh, and could not shake it because it had been well built. But the one who doesn't obey is, is the one like builds on the sand. And when the when the flood comes, the house is, uh, falls apart. And as Yeshua even said, uh, in Matthew where he says that uh, in, in Matthew 7, verse 21, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father, who is in heaven, will enter. What is the will of the Father? will the father is his Torah because that's the instructions he gave to Israel that's what Israel disobeying those those instructions is what got them kicked out of the land go read Isaiah go read Jeremiah just like it there I believe it's in Jeremiah where it says my name is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you he says, I am kicking them out of the land for my name's sake. People can't turn, can't disobey God and say that they're doing things in his name. Uh, and that's part of the problem. And it, as we read uh, further in this passage in, in uh, verse 22, Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name cast out demons, and in your name perform many miracles? So they had an understanding of what in his name meant. However, he, what he says, his way of saying is verse 23, And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me. You who practice lawlessness. What is lawlessness? Well, Torahlessness. We don't do what he says. What? Let's you look at the parable of the wheat and the tares. When you look at it being explained, it says in uh, Matthew 13, verse 41, the Son of Man will send forth his angels and they will gather out of his kingdom all the stumbling blocks and those who committed lawlessness. Yet, you get pe people that say, oh, well, the law was done away with? Are they lawless? You know, John says it, that sin is transgression of the law. And is lawlessness. So, and they're all gathered out. Verse 42, and will th throw them in the furnace of fire. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father who has ears, let him, he who has ears, let him hear. So it makes it very, very clear, I believe, what being in his name is a is about uh, you know it's about abiding in him 
if we if we say we are his and we yet we don't do what he said to do and we don't live as he lived because he lived the Torah lifestyle if we don't live the way he lived then we got a problem if we read in John you can read in John uh, 10 where it says uh, that my sheep hear my voice and the sheep follow him because they know his voice he says in verse 3 of John 10 to him the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out then he puts forth all his own he goes ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice so and his voice is Torah Yeshua is the great shepherd he his voice is Torah and those who hear him embrace the word that he said he says in uh, John 15 verse 10 it says if you keep my commandments you will abide in my love just as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love the commandments are love they're not a burden just like and you can read my video on praying in his name this is kind of a companion and that's so important in his name one of the highest commandments is thou shalt not take the Lord of the, thy God in vain if we take Yeshua's name in vain and then we we act us aren't we taking his name in vain Please, let's consider this. Shalom, shalom, and read your Bible. It, it will change your life if you will actually read the Bible for yourself. Shalom.